I trust you are aware that we're being controlled in every area of our lives, even the toothbrush that you will use tonight to brush your teeth with. Otherwise, what you're going to hear for the next few moments' time could be very disturbing to you. So, here are the facts. There is as much crude oil on the north slope of Alaska as there is in Saudi Arabia. The governor of Alaska stated on the Mill Mayer TV show, Real Time, on March the 18th, 2005, there is potentially enough crude oil on the north slope of Alaska to supply the entire United States of America for 200 years. He's correct. Peak oil is a misnomer. It is an idea perpetrated by the powers that be for the purpose of deceiving the American public. Russia has just drilled some what they call super deep wells to the depth of 40,230 feet. Super deep wells, which they call Cola SG3, they have found massive amounts of oil. The world is nowhere near running out of crude oil. Gasoline at the gas pump could be less than $1.50 a gallon within the next one year here in the United States of America if only our president and vice president and our administration in Washington would be honest with the American people. There is enough natural gas on the north slope of Alaska to supply the entire United States of America for over 200 years. If every other natural gas well in America were cut off tomorrow morning at the projected rate of increased consumption, every 24 hours at Prudhoe Bay, Alaska, on the north slope where the large oil field is, they pump back into the ground one billion cubic feet of natural gas that comes up with the oil. You did hear correctly. I did not say million. I said one billion cubic feet. And just in case you would like some details and would wish to follow further with what I'm saying to attempt to prove right or wrong, try this one. Contact someone you know that works on the North Slope of Alaska, anyone that has any contact with anyone there, and ask them this. They are using 48 747 type jet aircraft engines in order to pump that eight, uh, a one billion cubic feet of natural gas back into the ground every 24 hours. If you want details, we can go as far as you'd like. Dr. Stan Monteith, you know who I'm speaking of, don't you? Very famous radio talk show host, very conservative individual. I've been on his station, on his program many times in the past year. Dr. Stan said to me a while back, he said, Lindsay, I like to prove what I have on my show. He said, can you in some way verify the information that you're giving in your book, The Energy Non-Crisis, and the other things that you have to say? And I said, well, Dr. Stan, for you, knowing who you are, and the fact that you will not tell false about what you hear, I say, yes. I will give you the name of an individual who right now is working for BP Oil Company. As you remember, BP bought out Arco, and BP and Arco were basically the ones that produced the entire Prudhoe Bay oil field, east and west side, Arco on the east side, BP on the west side. And I said, I will give you the name of an individual who still works there that was back there during the days when I was there that saw the Gull Island field brought in and proven Dr. Stan Monteith took his phone number. I will not give his name for protection because this man has said, if you can ever get a congressman who will make a congressional investigation out of this, he said, I will appear, even though it might cost me my life and my family. So I said, Dr. Stan, I'm sure you'll keep it there, and therefore I won't give his name tonight. But Dr. Stan called him, found out he does work for BP, verified who he was, and his question was, is what Lindsey Williams says in his book, The Energy Non-Crisis, true? The gentleman said, yes, everything he says is true in fact, but he said he hasn't told what I know since he left. 
And Dr. Sand said, what's that? He said, since Lindsay left the Prudhoe Bay oil field as chaplain, we since have discovered another field as large as Gull Island. America has everything we need on the north slope of Alaska. My book, The Energy Non-Crisis, is the only book on the face of the earth that tells of the largest oil pool in North America, possibly the largest oil pool on the face of the earth, that was discovered, brought in, tested, and proven when I was there as a chaplain. And today, not one drop of that oil has ever been allowed to come to the American people by order of the government of the United States of America. Gasoline, within 12 months' time, could be at the gas pump in California less than $1.50 a gallon if only the administration in Washington would be honest with us as American people. I'll never forget that day. I had just gone to Alaska as a missionary. It was 1970. Came out in the Anchorage newspaper, Trans-Alaska Oil Pipeline to be built. 25,000 pipeliners to converge on the state of Alaska to build that 800-mile pipeline, four-foot diameter, largest pipe ever constructed on the face of the earth for carrying of crude oil, $12 billion to be spent in three years' time, 25,000 pipeliners to converge on the state of Alaska. The first thing that came to my mind was, as a Baptist missionary, 25,000 of the most cussingest, drinkingest, onerous folks on the face of the earth. <laughs> and believe you me, that was the understatement of the year when I arrived on the pipeline. So I went to Alaska Pipeline Service Company and I said, don't you need a chaplain on the Trans-Alaska Oil Pipeline? They said, well, we never had a chaplain on any pipeline in the world. We would know what to do with you. They said, come back and see us later. Well, I did. I guess persistence paid off. Because after a number of months, they finally said, all right, we'll let you have the northern seven camps, including the big oil field at Prudhoe Bay, down to Galbraith Lake in the Brooks Mountains, and go up there and see what you can do. Just hold a worship service in each one of the camps once a day. said, the men don't know the difference. After all, they worked six weeks on, six weeks off, seven, uh, uh, 12 hours on, 12 hours off. They don't know what Sunday is, and I did. About six months later, Mr. R.H. King, I'll never forget him, Mr. R.H. King came to me, he was a personal relations man with Alaska, and he said, Chaplain, we never knew what value you would be to us. He said, you're literally saving us thousands of dollars of counseling fees that we aren't having to pay, and we have just voted to give you executive status if you will accept it. And I said, well, Mr. King, what does that mean? I've never been an executive on anybody's board but the Lord's. And I said, well, what? He said, well, you can go any place you'd like, see anything you'd like to see. We'll let you have your own vehicle, have, give you an executive pass. And he said, we would like to invite you to sit in on our board meetings in an advisory capacity in order to help the relationship between management and labor. For the next three years' time, only by the providence of God, because it never could have been any other way, I had the opportunity to sit with, live in the same dorms with, rub shoulders with, sit across the table from the most powerful, controlling, manipulative men on the face of this earth. The ones that you only read about in books. It changed my life. I never knew such people existed. I'd been a Baptist minister for 20 years. I had had the privilege of being around honest people and deacons and good Christians. And all of a sudden, I was thrown into the midst of those that you hear that control the world. 